Remember that ESP sensor that we brought to life in the last video using ESP Home? Well, I brought it to the next level, literally. I've been testing this bad boy for a week now, complete with a custom 3D printed case that I had to change a few times. I also added the powerful infrared matrix sensor MLX9640 or as I like to call it Sauron's Eye. Let's dive into how it's performing. Hey everyone, quick announcement before we dive in. I received some questions about buying this ESP32 power over ethernet sensor. Thank you. I'm really excited that you are interested in this project. However, selling hardware, as its name already suggests, is hard. There is a lot involved. Ordering components, PCP assembly, testing, shipping, certification regulatory compliance, warranty control, user manuals, insurance, warranty handling, and probably even more things that I haven't discovered yet. But here's the plan. I've put a link here somewhere and also in a pinned comment down below. If you are interested in getting one of these or hundred, please click through and let me know. If enough people are interested, I will make it happen. And if you're not interested, no worries at all. Please enjoy the rest of the video. So this is the PCB using Fusion 360 <sighs> that I love and hate at the same time because it replaces Eagle and I love Eagle and I hate Fusion for electronics but i love fusion for 3d designs and i hate the subscription model i love how easy it is to use damn it but still i used it so in order to mount something to the ceiling i really like systems where you mount a plate to the ceiling and then you just lock the thing in place that way you can easily remove it later if you want to reflash the firmware for example or you add a new sensor you mount this thing to the ceiling and then this thing is mounted to the PCB. Yeah, and by rotating this, it gets locked in place. And then on top, you have the PCB. And then on top of the PCB, you have the enclosure. I had to raise Sauron's eye a little bit. So solder on some wires to make it higher. This is the IR receiver and the three IR transmitters are all around here. I also made some holes because we want to measure temperature and humidity and CO2 levels in the air so we need some air flow. That also brings me to the first issue with this design. If you look at the temperature readings <laughs> this is what I measured with the first case iteration. I measured the temperature of 32 degrees which is way too high the reason is the sensor gets hot inside of this case and you have the thermal sensor inside of the case which is not perfect for measuring accurate temperature of the room. In fact you measure the temperature of the sensor itself. And that's why I made this change. I reduced the wife acceptance factor a little bit and put the DHT22 outside of the case. It looks a little bit ugly but I was able to reduce the temperature. It's still very high, but it's also mounted to the ceiling. If we take a look at these measurements right here, I can add the temperature of Sauron's eye. Sauron's eye is an infrared matrix sensor and it also measures the temperature, although it measures the temperature of the floor because it looks at the floor. So this is the median temperature that Sauron's eye measures in the last few days. You might be thinking what is going on here? Why does it go up and down and up and down three degrees every day in this perfect shape? Well here you can see the heating system of the house. We have a heating pump, a floor heating system. So it's perfectly in sync with the temperature. Of course if the heating system is turned on then the temperature rises and eventually it turns off and the temperature falls again. These very high peaks here, they are for warm water. So the actual true room temperature might be between these two, but they are a pretty good indication of the room temperature. One goal of the sensors is to compare different rooms and that should be possible with this sensor. We also see the LDR. I have to say it's very dark here it's currently not mounted in the living room sometimes you see sunlight and sometimes you see that the light is turned on 
and off. Not bad. CO2. Yeah, the CO2 levels look pretty interesting. We have some peaks, I guess, if someone walks by, we get a peak. And also if someone is at home, then the curve rises. And if no one is at home, then the curve goes down. And we also have a ventilation system. So this also has some effect here. I also added a buzzer control. So I can turn on the buzzer. I can also change the frequency of the buzzer. So this buzzer control is also triggered by the smoke alarm. I brought some matches. Let's set the house on fire. Um, no, let's create some smoke, right? And there it goes. I'm not sure if this thing will ever turn off again. So, oh, better. Yeah, so I, I connected them. The sensor unit supplies voltage to the RM1000. And if it detects smoke, then it gets the signal. And this thing also outputs an audio signal because this one doesn't. Uh, there is no speaker inside. There's just uh, red LEDs. Yeah, that's of course not enough if there is fire in the house. We, we now get an acoustic alarm and we can also trigger other events in the house. For example, turn on all the lights, open the shades or maybe send an SMS or email if you're not at home and share the good news. Now Sauron's eye is absolutely amazing. One very cool feature of Sauron's eye is this right here. I go to the IP address of my sensor and then the thermal camera. And this brings me to this picture right here. And I get a new picture every second so I can reload and it sends me a new picture. Let me show you what it does when I go there. So now you see me coming into the room. Now I'm exactly below the sensor and I'm holding the MacBook. Now I continue to walk away from the sensor. Okay, let's go into the other direction. So I come in below the sensor and away. Isn't that cool? I really like it. I will try to use this information in combination with the movement sensor to get a clear picture if someone is in the room or not. Let me quickly show you how I got Sauron's eye to work. I found this right here. It is a GitHub repository that supports the IR sensor. Officially, it's not supported, so I can use this as external component. Here is how. So you have to add libraries, and that's exactly what I did here. So I added these libraries, and then you have to add an external component. Also add the URL of the GitHub repository and then you just add this stuff right here. And you can also tweak the values and that's it. I added it right here and then it just works. I set the interval to one second. It's more than enough to uh, measure the temperature every second. Completely overkill. But for presence detection I need quick updates. The only thing that doesn't work right now is the audio detection circuit. And for now, it will stay like this because I need to write my own external component in order to support the I2C digital potentiometer that I'm using for the circuit. It's not super critical. I don't have to remove the sensors for reflashing. Uh, so I will create more of the sensors, place it all over the house and try to make use of them. Let me know if you have some questions. I'm happy to answer them. Please like and subscribe to this channel. Let me know if you're interested in a smart home. Maybe I should do more videos about how everything comes together. It's quite a big project. I've been working on this for years now. We have some really cool features in the house and I think it has a, a unique architecture. No, not just talking about the building, but also the electronics. Let me know if you use Home Assistant at your house too, because I love it. It's so great. There is an update every week. It's almost too many updates. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. I need to fix that audio sensor. <laughs>